afternoon, graduates, family members, faculty, staff, and chair Julie Workman and board of directors, uh, principal, principal Con McCartan and assistant principal Re Rebecca Bolin. It is an honor to be part of this celebration, the 2020 graduation ceremony at Perkridge Center for Arts Education. Graduation should be recognized for its immense significance. It is recognition not only of personal commitment and completion, but also one of individual pride. A high school diploma is a wonderful tool in this world, one that open doors of opportunity for those who have earned a diploma. Parents, you are probably wondering where the years have gone. As you marvel at your sons and daughters' accomplishments, it doesn't seem that long ago these young adults we honor today were toddling off to start kindergarten. Of course, living through those years between kindergarten and graduation may have seemed like an eternity for the students and perhaps for some parents as well. Students, you are the class of 2020. You are graduating at a time in our history when it, the world is dealing with enormous challenges. The opportunities, opportunities created by those challenges have never been greater. These are your opportunities. Graduation is not an end goal. It is instead a step in the larger journey of life. Wherever the future takes you, let it take you somewhere. Let this journey and all the accomplishments we achieve during its course be taken as starting points for the future ach achievements. You have already started down the road of life that doesn't follow a straight line. I am confident you are up to the task of creating a better world for all of us. Maybe one of you will be given a graduation speech to seniors in high school about what it was like to graduate in 2020. Graduation should serve as a launching point, projecting each of you into the future that lies in front of you. Finally, for today and the rest of your life, may all your dreams come true. Thanks, Dr. Rick. It's amazing to be a part of such a phenomenal leadership team and community, the Perpich community. Seniors, here you are, the Perpich class of 2020. What's the cliche saying? Welcome to the first day of the rest of your lives. Welcome to the next step in your journey. I recognize no one leaves here or anywhere with all of the answers. And I'm confident that we've set in place the understanding to expect the unexpected, to trust in yourself and the process. Seniors, you've got this. I know this because I've seen each of you full of resiliency and perseverance. I've seen you working hard in the gallery and studio spaces, media lab and dark room. I've seen you moving in the dance studio and black box theater. I've seen you thinking of just the right wording in the lit loft and practicing music in the performance spaces. I've seen you in academic classrooms and in the hallways making bird sounds. I've seen you hugging each other and laughing and yes, crying. You hold each other. We hold each other through learning, creativity and life experiences. The path to success is not a linear or straight line. In fact, it's quite subjective. It certainly holds plenty of joy and pain. The path is our process and growth. It's the very thread connecting us together, wherever we are. I'm here at Perpich with you. You may not be in this space physically, but you are here. Perpich is not just a space. It's a force and that force is built by you. You will always be a part of the Perpich community and in our hearts, my heart. Even in isolation, especially in isolation and distance, we are a community and Perpich is our connective path. You are Perpich. You are a member of the Perpich community forever. Welcome to the celebration of your journey thus far and moving forward. To further acknowledge you and lead us on this virtual graduation journey, we have Trent Rammert. 
Tori Peterson said, Trent has tremendous motivation and self-discipline with his theater and academic work. The work is always very thoughtful, wonderfully creative, and of the highest standard. Basically, Trent is one heck of a guy. That pretty much sums it up. Trent's amazing, and I feel fortunate to know him and to have worked with him through student leadership. He is thoughtful, dedicated, and so very insightful. The perfect MC for today's graduation ceremony. Wow, here we are. After months of not being able to see each other, we finally have this moment now, even if it is remotely. But not only is this a time for celebration and commencement, but also an opportunity. Take a moment to look at the collision of our worlds and look ahead at the future and opportunities in front of us. Let's reminisce on a time of auditoriums filled with audience members, packed gallery openings, or hugging a friend in the library after a long day of school. Now, I'm sure you're all wincing and gasping at the thought of mass gatherings and lack of social distancing. Of course, this is what we considered to be our normal just a few short months ago. It's like the saying goes, you don't know what you have until it's gone. It truly was so clear back then, being able to set and design our goals for ourselves, seeing each other in person every day, and being able to connect, create, and make a change within our school. Just like on our first day at Purpich, as we gathered into the performance hall and were embraced into a new community, we were able to see each of the faculty that would soon inspire us, as well as our classmates that we've all grown with together. But it's during this time of a pandemic that we've been able to see the resilience of a community of artists as we've had to shift and get creative. There are three C's that define our time here at Purpich. Create, connect, and change. First, we have create. This is what drew each of us to Purpich in the first place. The search for people with similar interests and goals in life, of being storytellers and artists. It's Purpich that continues to foster these identities within us, as well as our parents and guardians who guided us through life and ultimately let us attend Purpich in the first place. So thank you for allowing us to spread our wings and explore and get ready because the flight has just begun. The second C is connect. We've all been able to connect with each other in our groups, classrooms, and school as a whole, as we learn together, strive together, and connect together. As you think about your classmates and those that we spent so much time with together, we're each filled with our own stories about our time here at Purpich. I remember walking into the school for the first time anxiously awaiting my audition with a monologue I had only written the night before. Clearly, not much has changed as I still push it to the midnight deadlines for some assignments. The music students, enjoying a moment in the Tony Basta during lunch to take in some precious rays of sunshine. Hannah Banwell, continuing the tradition of being the junior to be thrown into the geese-infested pond these moments during our time here at Purpich that we'll all miss. Now, we encounter our third C, change. Our class has gone through a great deal of change. All of us from different schools and towns coming together. A change in our administration with Ahava Silky Jones our first year who kept us up to date with the events and happenings each week with their newsletter, as well as the weekly events of Austin Silky Jones, who will forever be 1.5 years old in our hearts. Then last summer, wondering who our next principal will be, we got Con McCartan, 
And he's there every morning at the top of the staircase, waiting to greet us and give us a compliment heart attack on our way to class. We've had a change of location right at the end of our senior year. We've had to adapt, but we've worked to maintain connection with each other, going from conversations in the hallway to conversations online over a Zoom call, making sure everyone is staying safe and doing well during this time. And here we are now, as we face the next change in our lives, as we face the world head on and leave the safety of education that we've known for so long. I'm continually struck with moments of realization that I won't be coming back here next year. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. There won't be any more simple days of going through the lunch line, hearing the sprinkler in the pond, or just sitting in class. That a random Monday in the middle of March was suddenly our last day in school, at school, at Perpich. What we would give to go back for just one full day and just exist. But what makes Perpich truly special isn't the building itself. It's the people inside of it that make Perpich what it is. As Rebecca Bolin said when discussing the administration's response during the pandemic, she said, our job is to honor tradition while balancing the emotion and creation of it all. Or Love in the Sun, our Valentine's Day celebration, when the faculty physically serve us a meal, a beautiful representation of the care that they've nurtured within us during our time here at Perpich. Now, when you think about us, the class of 2020, what did you imagine? I always thought that we would be the class with the perfect, clear vision into the future of the world. But right now, the world is blurry. But that's how life is, full of the unknown, full of possibilities waiting for us to go into the world to create and inform it. The lyrics from the song Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana says, here we are now, entertain us. Now, I'm sure you're looking at me and thinking, Trent, really, Nirvana? <laughs> well, yes. I may not exactly seem like the poster child for a Nirvana fan, but I feel that these lyrics best capture the state of the world right now. The definition of entertain is to provide amusement, enjoyment, or thought. During this time, we've learned that what the world truly needs right now is art to inform us, distract us, or simply give us hope for the future. We need art and entertainment right now. We will all continue to have highs and lows, struggles and resilience throughout our lives. But it's the connection with those around us that we've created that'll power us through. Nothing lasts forever. Some things even get cut short, like our senior year of high school. But it's the connections that we make and our art that do last forever. Continue to create. Take the connections that you've made and embrace the change in life. Life is all about the change and making it shine. The world is there for us, saying, here we are now, entertain us. We'll start today in the dance studio, home to the dance department. Anna Miller says, sometimes I spend more time in here than my dorm room. This is a place for dancers to train and create, as well as use their voices. 
and explore why they dance. It's not just fitting into a mold, but finding what makes them unique as dancers and artists.
Here in room 201, the literary students share some of their most personal writings and stories. Priya Dalal Whalen said, it takes a lot of work to read raw material in front of others. It's these shared moments that build confidence and allow the lit students to explore new ideas as writers, knowing they'll have the support from their fellow writers. The walk to the lit loft was an anxious one. I clenched my folder in my hand, feeling the sweat pool as my mind filled with worry. It was audition day. I was sitting at a table in the middle of the loft, trying to write coherently yet quickly. I was given a 10 minute writing exercise, but it felt like hours. There, whilst writing with a passionate speed, I was confronted with shaky hands, a racing heart, and a smile stretched from ear to ear. I kept reminding myself that, even if I don't get in, at least I had this experience. I looked around and saw old public greeting posters, clouds floating on the light blue walls, a view of the pond outside, and let's get lit hanging above the computers. There were messages from former lit kids painted on the sacred walls. I hoped that one day I could do that too. I came to Purbridge, and like everyone else, I had to leave. Through the tears, the writing blocks, through the painful memories I resurfaced, I think of the lit loft and why I was accepted, why all of us were. The lit kids, we are brave. We are not alone, because the words of former lit kids will always guide us. No, this year, we didn't get to paint our names on those walls, but the sounds of our laughter, our broken sobs, our endless conversations will always be there. We came in as strangers to each other, but we are walking away as a family whose quotes will live on in our own and future lit kids' memories. The temperature in the lit room likes to vary wildly. Some days are like walking into hell as it freezes over, and all the impossible things that were supposed to happen then start to come true. In workshop, we all fidget and create and burn fires fueled by the ruins of old gold precious poems and papers that needed further smelting. Other times, especially when the kiln in the ceramic studio is on, the room hits a feverish high, where we all move slowly and take care of ourselves and each other, and spend the days lazing around, building up fuel for the fire. I carry a purple thermos full of tea or sometimes instant coffee which always tastes hot before tasting like anything else. It burns especially hard when the room is cold and we were all alert. Steam seems to come out of our mouths and ears. On hot days, I still drank the nearly boiling tea, which fogs over like the atmosphere behind the glass windows. It always contrasts the cold Minnesota wind, but despite the climate, we all sit together as the ever-beating heart of that second floor corner. You have to get to class early to claim a nice chair in room 201. The blue plush ones with the cool metal bars that are for resting your feet over if you sit sideways. Sometimes even a random pillow is tossed onto. There's always been an imbalance of the comfy padded chairs and the hard plastic ones. Bigger morning classes, classes would sprawl the good chairs around the room, changing the afternoon lit class arrangement. Random empty chairs around the room allow each person to take as much or as little space as they want. Big chairs balance out the small chairs. A few chairs on each side of the table, a few lit kids on each side of the table. Maybe it isn't so imbalanced. In the lit loft, there are mirrors pushed up against the window, angled to catch that picture-perfect angle at 7.30 a.m. We gather around the morning glow that holds us, connects us, the routine before school, the red and orange sunlit glare of giggles and poses. These mirrors also watched us get ready, for public readings as we pretended we had the perfect lighting in the early fall evening. The mirrors sitting with plants that are either dead or fake. The mirrors have watched us cry, laugh, and be together. Whether I was waking up late or just wanting to show off that day, I normally brought my scooter to school with me. Say what you want about that scooter, but it was really efficient. I was able to get to school from the dorms in under a minute. I zoomed by the cafeteria to snag breakfast and the same MacBook every day from Anne. On my way to class, of course, I was always fashionably late. 
I scooted through Amy's door to flip my hair and make my way to the back of class, where everyone stared at me due to my deafening music levels. Once class was out, I normally made sure to leave the scooter in the loft so Pickerel didn't yell at me. During lunch, people got the chance to glide for themselves. After lunch, I looped the lit loft about 80 times while everyone conversed. We were waiting for Shannon, her usual five minutes late. During work time, I'd bust out El Razor and zoom through the hallways in search of a water or a bathroom. Really, I was just saying hello to my friends when I got the chance. If I had known any better, I would have looped the school one last time. One last hug for all my friends, one last goodbye, one last look in their eyes. I remember that last day it came out of nowhere. I miss you all. I miss seeing you all smile, and I wave as I fly by on my scooter. One day, Kate, I'll teach you to ride like you've always asked. And Con, I guess that was my last time riding down the halls. I appreciate the concern, though. It was fun while it lasted, but here's the class of 2020. In the middle of the room, there is a large square of tables, each one touching the other and leaving a blank hole in the middle. In that middle, there is an orange plastic chair that always catches my eye. It's back to one of the wooden tables, staring at nothing. Around the room, the rest of the chairs are pushed and pulled in different spots daily. There are no assigned seats, but there are the places that you sit. The faces are always in the same place. You always know the name of each one. The voices match the poems and the stories. Conversation sits in the air. Loneliness demolished by repetition. Same old has never felt so comforting. Write the world in a notebook. Print it out for workshop the next day. The chair witnesses art in the making. I imagine the lit loft frozen in our absence. Old drafts crumpled in the corner, the fishbowl full of hair left by our ancestors, the sweatshirt I forgot was even mine. Our drawings suspended on the chalkboard, though we never got to sign the walls. Scattered coffee mugs, cushions stacked sideways. I hope the mice take over now that we're gone, that they burst through the empty snack bags and crawl all over the comfy chairs. I don't care if they ruin the upholstery or nibble the edges of books, so long as they capture the stillness. I don't remember when I found out the lit loft clock was broken, but I do remember that I felt betrayed. High schoolers worship the clocks on the walls. Whether they love school or hate school, they probably know how many minutes are left in the day at any given moment. Is the one in the lit loft wrong? Maybe it just wanted us to stay there a little longer so we could understand what it meant to worship the clocks on the walls. How it was poignant, how it was pointless. It counted the minutes. Did it count how many minutes I spent terrified? Did it count how many napkins people put on me when I fell asleep? Did it count how many compliments I fished for? Did it count how many lessons I learned that no one could have taught on purpose? It's so easy to get lost in those two hands. I wondered if it counted how many times I accidentally made eye contact with someone sitting near the clock and hope they didn't notice despite knowing for a fact that they did. Maybe I should have just checked my phone instead. Or maybe I should have appreciated that time with these people while the clock allowed it. The media students meet here, the Media Lab, a sanctuary where time flies by in creation. Ezra Augustine said, I could spend three hours in here editing and it only feels like a minute. Students are sucked into a world through a lens of creation, a place that's personal to them and speaks to their dedication and connection to their art.
tradición viene de que estaban los abuelitos, o sea, los tatarabuelos. Every year, the senior class selects a faculty member to speak. Speaker Bob Fry is someone who is a role model to students. Mary Pfeiffer says he shows care and respect for his students, listening to their opinion and hearing their art. A wonderful representation of the Purpich ideologies of being a teaching artist, Bob Fry. Thank you, Trent. Hello, my name is Bob Fry, and it is my honor to have been asked by the Purpich Arts High School class of 2020 to be their faculty speaker at today's graduation ceremony. I would like to welcome you, the graduating students, your families and friends, and my esteemed colleagues in joining us today. Wow, crazy days indeed. I'm giving this speech in the Purpich Performance Hall in which I am joined only by my colleague Rebecca and her camera. What up, Rebecca? It is, I must say, a strange way to deliver a graduation speech, and yet this is the situation in which, in some form or other, we all find ourselves today. Masks, social distancing, a constant reinvention of what once was. Still, I'm very glad we are here together, even in this virtual space. Thank you, all of you, for being here. I would like to take a moment to recognize a few people who have been instrumental in not only making today's ceremony happen, but also in helping the Arts High School through what has been in many ways a difficult year with unique and unprecedented challenges. Dr. Charles Rick, the Executive Director of the Purpich Center for Arts Education, Con McCartan, the Arts High School Principal, and Rebecca Bullen, the Arts High School Assistant Principal, are each new to their roles at Purpich this year. I believe they have handled the 2019-2020 school year amidst the challenges posed by COVID-19 with grace, with compassion, and with a genuine and significant dedication into preserving and protecting the beauty that is Purpich. Thank you, Dr. Rick. Thank you, Khan. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for the support you have shown to students and faculty and staff. It is not unnoticed nor unappreciated. Thank you. I would also like to take more than a moment to recognize Marla Reamer. Marla is finishing her 25th year at Purpich, 22 of those having been spent at Arts High School. If you know Marla, and if you know all she does, I do not have to explain. If you don't know Marla and have not been a Purpich student or a Purpich employee, there is no way I could explain all that she does and has done for the thousands of Purpich community members with whom she has worked during the last 25 years. For example, it is Marla more than anyone who works each year, all year, to put together the Purpich graduation ceremony, including this one. I'm certain that Khan, like each of his predecessors, would agree that Marla is a Purpich principal secret weapon, the go-to person with a quarter century's worth of institutional knowledge. Marla, you will be sorely missed by all, including me. I wish I could say more, but it is my honor to thank you on behalf of a generation of students and their families and the scores of faculty, staff, administrators who have been fortunate to call you friend and colleague. Thank you, Marla. While I was happy to be asked to be the faculty speaker this year, I also felt a little sheepish in light of the COVID-inspired distance about being the only faculty member with the opportunity to address you, 
2020 graduates as you head out on your way. As such, Rebecca and I thought it might be cool to invite a few other folks to join my speech. Colleagues? Congratulations, class of 2020. I feel so lucky that I got to be one of your teachers and I look forward to the great things that you're gonna do in the future. Congratulations. A worldwide pandemic didn't keep you from graduating. It's also given you quite the preparation for life. As Stephen Colbert said, life is an improvisation. You have no idea what's going to happen next and you're mostly just making things up as you go along. So what comes next for you? Well, just keep going, you'll figure it out. Congratulations, class of 2020. I wish you all the best as you go down all the paths that you will choose. Congratulations. Purpose class of 2020, keep creating. I can't wait to see what you bring into the world. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. I have loved getting to know you this year and wish you the best in whatever's next. Please come back to visit. Congratulations. Hi, graduates. I want to congratulate you on your bravery, resilience, and just overall brilliance that you've exhibited and getting to this point in your life. You're amazing. So thank you. Well done. Congratulations to all the seniors on graduating and best of luck on your future endeavors. Congratulations, Purpose graduates. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, everyone. Purpose class of 2020, congratulations. We will miss you. So come back and visit and show us all the great stuff you're doing. Bye. It's been a privilege to see you grow and develop over the past two years. I can't wait to hear about what you're going to get up to next. Very well earned. Congratulations. Hey everyone. Congratulations. It's time to get out there and do stuff. Bonjour class de 2020. A quote from the little prince. On ne voit bien qu'avec le cœur. L'essentiel est invisible pour les yeux. Félicitations et au revoir. Make a heart with your hands. Bring it up to your eyes. Look with love in your eyes. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hey, class of 2020. We miss you. Don't forget us when you're famous. Because y'all are rock stars. Congratulations. Yay. Hi, everyone. I wish we were together so I could give you each a hug on your way out the door. But I know you're now going to go out in the world and you're going to make your mark in your own remarkable styles that you each have. One of the things I want to share with you is one of my favorite quotes, and it is, if I can't do great things, let me do small things in a great way. And I know you will, and I hope you'll come back and tell us all about it. I'm going to miss you. Bye-bye. Congratulations, graduates. Remember, always consider your audience. Whether you're communicating or creating, it's that connection that brings meaning. 2020. Thank you colleagues for joining me in congratulating the Perpich Arts High School class of 2020. While, as I mentioned, I was honored to be asked to speak at today's ceremony, I also found the idea a bit daunting. How best to address a graduating class who has experienced a senior year like any other, who has, due to circumstances beyond their control, finished their high school careers, not sitting next to peers in a classroom, not talking and walking in the hallways of Purpage, not ducking out for a quick lunch with friends, not staying late for rehearsal or to finish a piece, but rather sitting in front of screens trying to digest and learn from an adjusted curriculum delivered by teachers trying to learn how to create it. What can I say to you, class of 2020, who has lived through a senior year nobody could have expected? What can I say to you? Purpage class of 2020, I can say this. I can say that you are all artists. That is how and why you found Purpich and why Purpich found you. I believe it is the job of the artist to transform the expected and to make the unexpected transformative. Again, it is the job of the artist to transform the expected and to make the unexpected transformative. While I humbly defer to Craig Farmer on all matters of art history, I'm reminded of a trip I took years ago to the Art Institute of Chicago. I went to view an exhibit of work by the French Impressionist Claude Monet. 
I was vaguely familiar with Monet's work. I had a general impression, get it, impression, but did not know much about his life. Among other things, I learned and was struck by the fact that as he aged, Monet dealt with cataracts that severely affected his vision, obviously a problematic condition for a visual artist. Fearing and for years avoiding the surgery that was available to him, Monet adjusted his approach and worked within this new paradigm. He simply painted bigger canvases, ones that he could see better. He painted bigger canvases and he altered his color palette. He accommodated, he persevered, he accepted the unexpected and he made it, my friends, transformative. Speaking of the unexpected, many of you may know my wife, Laura, has cancer. She was diagnosed in February 2011, and she was stage four at diagnosis. The odds that she would live five years were between five to eight percent. Obviously, this was an unexpected blow to Laura and to me and to us as parents of our then seven-year-old son, Jonathan. Today, Jonathan is 16 years old, and today, Laura is watching me deliver this speech. It has not been an easy nine years, but they have not been years without joy. Laura remains a capable and competent attorney, an awesome and a loving mom, and my best friend. Further, she has become, in the relatively small but significant community of those fighting kidney cancer, an inspirational figure. She connects with fellow patients online, does the occasional media interview, and by living her life serves as a symbol of hope to many who know her story. She certainly did not seek nor did she expect to occupy this role yet. From the unexpected news of nine years ago, much good and love and hope has come. When I was a kid, my mom asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I answered, a singer or a shortstop. While the reality of my baseball skills soon brought my baseball dreams to an end, I did pick up a guitar and teach myself a few chords. As the years passed, high school led to college and a major in political science, which then led to law school and a JD. I did not envision teaching social studies at an arts high school when I graduated from law school in 1992. I also did not envision, a few months later, putting my yet-to-begin legal career to the side and moving from my home in Cleveland, Ohio, to play folk music in the bars of Minneapolis. That, however, is exactly what I did. I followed my heart. All these years later, and I will spare you many of the details, I find the serendipitous merger of my past pursuits political science, the law, writing and playing, recording original music, believe it or not, these things meshed well and somehow led me to what is now an 18 year career teaching social studies here at Purpage. A job I so love in large part because class of 2020, because of the young artists like yourselves with whom I get to work each day. I did not expect to be a social studies teacher, my friends. I did not expect it, but here I am, one of the few people I know who can honestly say that they love their job. I love it, in fact, even and despite having co-taught a class with theater teacher Tori Peterson since 2007. True story. Once again, Purpose Class of 2020, each of you is an artist. Again, I believe it is the job of the artist to transform the expected and to make the unexpected transformative. I trust and I believe, Class of 2020, that you will do your job well. I know you will. I mentioned that as a kid, I taught myself a few chords on the guitar. Over the years, I learned a few more and I've written more songs than I can remember. I'd like to close this speech today by sharing one of them with you. It is about watching my beloved but terrible Cleveland Browns play football. It is about watching these games with my son. It is about finding joy in unexpected places. While I did not write this song for today's ceremony, I did add a verse at the end just for you, class of 2020. Thank you for letting me share, and thank you for being the group of hopeful and genuine and open young artists that you are. Congratulations and good luck. This song is called That Perfect Season. Thank you. I'm number 2017, like it was just last year. In the basement with my eye teenage kid and it sound was pretty clear As we watched a favorite football team on Sunday afternoons 
Would not win too many games, nah, not even just a few. Would not win too many games, nah, not even just a few. They didn't really have a quarterback, they didn't really have a coach. They didn't have too much of anything, except a lot of room to grow. But still we watched them every week, my teenage kid and me. When the season ended by the record worst team in history. And when the season ended by the record worst team in history. And mama never understood, though we always would invite her. Sit with us in that basement room, we was always so excited. We watch some games every week, we say this could be the one they win. Though it never was, the last them all, though I'd do it all again. And though the last them all, you see, my friends, we were the ones to win. The sandwiches at halftime, I'd pick them up, he'd set the tray. We talk about the week ahead and we talk about the game. Yeah, girls in school and rock and roll the way things used to be. Every minute was a treasure. We was making memories. Yeah, every minute was a treasure. We was making memories. Turns out they did not win a game, our favorite football team. We lost our 16 games they played in 2017. Yeah, but for me a perfect season, spending Sundays with my kids. Watching football in that basement room, best thing I ever did. Spending Sundays with my teenage son, best thing I ever did. So here we are, it's 2020, graduation day. And I sit and sing this song for you as we send you on your way. And I wish you lots of hope and love and what I do and where you go. Yeah, my friends, I wish you many perfect seasons of your own. Yes, I wish you lots of hope and love and what I do and where you go. Yes, my friends, I wish you many perfect seasons of your own. Yes, my friends, I wish you many perfect seasons of your own. Yes, my friends, I wish you many perfect seasons of your own. Congrats, 2020. Good luck. The black box is an area that has a special place in my heart as a theater student. According to, well, me, theater is not just memorizing lines and blocking. It's about sharing our common experiences as humans. The black box has created a safe place to take risks and create bonds with an audience and other actors. A space for an ensemble of performers to create connections that will last a lifetime. Prospero's Epilogue from The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Now, my charms are all overthrown. And what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now, tis true. I must be here confined by I must you. Be here confined or sent to you. Naples. Let, Let me not, not since, I, since have I have my dukedom, dukedom gods, gods and pardon the deceivers. Well. Bear island by your spell. But release me from my bands. But release me from my bands. The help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails. My sails must fill. Must fill. Or else, or else my project, my project fail. fails. Which was to please, now I want. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enjoy. And my ending is despair. And my ending is despair. Is despair. 
unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults, as you from crimes you would pardon be. pardon be. Let your indulgence set me free. Let your indulgence set me which free. Which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults, as you from crimes would pardon be. Let your indulgence set me free. The end. The Visual Arts Studios provide space for students to explore their passions and their own individuality. Anneli Tron has said, this space has provided opportunities that create professional practices. While the creative practice takes place anywhere we go, the visual arts students have their own places in the studios, a second home to their creative process and their art.
Our final stop today are the music practice rooms, where discovery and collaboration live for the music students. Tori Evans said, it's given me a place where I can create without distractions and learn from other incredible musicians. Each person brings their own sound and style, which come together to make beautiful music. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and board of directors of the Perpich Arts High School, I am pleased and honored to present the graduating class of 2020. These seniors have fulfilled all local and state requirements for a Perpich Arts High School diploma. Ezra Augustine. Alexandra Alvarado. Sid Andreessen. Hannah Banwell.
Kat Barston. Katie Meg. Lauren Broninger. Sana Britt. Teresa Brooks. Sarah Brosi. Kyle Burge. Laura Coburn. Ryan Cook. Priya Dalal Whalen. Jude Durango. Jenna Dow. Lucy Duggan. Noah Engebretson. Life at Awagishik. Victoria Evans. Dylan Friel. Maslin Fry. Jamie Gabor. Leonardo Guaran Peters. Laura Hag, Oliver Hall, Catherine Hintz, Tegan Herman. Francis Holcomb. Lily Holker. Lars Hughes. Eva Hutchinson. Miles Irwin. Shailen Jacobs. Suko Johnson. Kirian Kamicha. Adam Kraft. Theo Kronfeld. Rebecca Lacasse. Henry Latham. Adela Laville. Anna McLeod. Lily Mays. George Meeks.
Anna Miller. Sadie Morgan. Nalady Nalane. Xavian Neal. Quentin Olson. Ellis Ott. Aiden Pisigma. Mary Pfeiffer. Trent Rammert. Curtis Rathai. Emma Reich. Lucy Roberts Neiman. Lucia Regeri. Mariana Sanchez Zapata. Fern Schiffer. Oli Sorensen. Anneli Tron. Leo Whalen. Madison Williams. Ash Wood. Greetings. We've reached that part of our program that's referred to as the final remarks. So we kind of thought maybe it would be appropriate to do the final remarks in this space where, as Trent mentioned in, in his talk, that random Monday in March where we were all together for the last time. But on a little more positive way, it's also an interesting place to do the final remarks because it's the place where we started every day together. As often as possible, I tried to be here at the top of these stairs to greet you as you began each day at Purpose. So it's kind of nice to be able to do the final remarks from this place. As a class, you've been through a great deal. Sadly, your year will always be referred to as the year of the pandemic, even though so many other things happened. So for that reason, you deserve a gift. And my gift to you will be that I will save my really long speech for the class of 2021. I can't hear you laughing or cheering right now, but I'm suspecting that's what's happening. So let me just share with you a story. And it, the story actually takes place here too. It was a Saturday uh, while admissions panels were going on. So the room was filled with families and students waiting for their opportunity to be able to go back and be part of a panel to see if they couldn't become students here like you. There was a mom who was nervously pacing around and she was looking at the community events bulletin board and signs that were up, went down the hallway and looked at the various pieces of art and read the artist statements. She came back down and walked up to me with tears in her eyes and I asked her, are you okay? And she said, I want so badly for my daughter to be part of a place that feels like this. She was able to glean from things that were on display. She was able to feel what this place was like simply from that. What I want you to know is that you have that power. The way that you are permeates every place around you to such a degree 
that that feeling can be felt by someone who's never been here before, but simply was down that hallway in this space and could feel what this place was like. Your legacy here is that during the time that you were here, you brought forth, carried forward that tradition of a place of empathy, of a place of inclusiveness, of a community. And that community feeling runs so deep that someone who's just here to see if their daughter could get in could feel it. I want to thank you for that because I can feel that too. I can feel what it's like to be part of a place like that. And so obviously I can't compliment you without a challenge. And the challenge will be this. Unfortunately, in the language of today, what I'd invite you to do is to be a virus of empathy. Be a virus of community, of inclusiveness, and go out and infect the world with that. Create hot spots in your family, in your faith community, on campus, in your work setting, in your travels. Create hot spots that feel like this place, empathetic, inclusive, a community, and let that spread throughout the world so that even though this year was defined for you by one kind of pandemic, you can actually create a completely different pandemic in the world that you're going to go out and infect. Class of 2020, congratulations. I'm so proud to have been with you this year. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I am a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. And for me, Perpich is family. Here, I found a community of artists that share one passion and love for art. And it's just soul bonding. I'm a Purpose 2020 graduate. I'm a Purpose 2020 graduate. I am a Purpose 2020 graduate. I'm a Purpose 2020 graduate. Purpose is a place where I can freely express myself without feeling judged. Purpose is community. Purpose is a community for open minded artists, and I think it's probably the only space in the state for people like that, which is really important and has helped me grow as a person and an artist. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I am a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. I am a 2020 Perpich graduate. I'm 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 a 2020 Perpich graduate and Perpich is family. Perpich is creation. Perpich is home. Perpich is the reason I moved across the country. Perpich is art school. Perpich is really awesome. Perpich is unique in a way that I didn't feel at my old school. At least in Perpich, I feel like I am more valid of a person. I'm a Perpich 2020 graduate. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. Perpich is a place to grow and be yourself. Perpich is amazing. I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate and Perpich is a special place that makes me feel free. <laughs> I'm a 2020 Perpich graduate. Perpich is an amazing place for a young artist to grow. Perpich is a celebration of art. Perpich is love and passion and art all mixed into one in a place where you can learn and you can meet others who share the same loves and passions and art that you do. Purpose is home um, and it's a place to find your people and find your passion and find who you really are. 
Yeah. I am a 2020 Purpage graduate, and Purpage is a home to me. <laughs>